Greetings, friends at UN Habitat. This is Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister in charge of social enterprise. I'm very happy to be here virtually to share with you some thoughts around social enterprise and social innovation. In conventional thinking, social benefits and business profits are opposite forces and often contradict each other, forcing the government to make trade-offs. However, the idea of social enterprise brings a brand new way of thinking. For social enterprises, the social concern is the core objective, which is achieved by developing business models to address social issues. In Taiwan, various organization forms of social enterprises have been developed in the past 20 years, such as community cooperatives, MPOs, and companies. Found in every corner of society, social enterprises are now close to the people and issues that are hardly reached by the government. A good is such an emerging social enterprise. November last year, a good launched a crowdfunding program named Endow City, assisting street sellers to rise to their feet. Through an innovative design of mobile stations illustrated by painters with Down syndrome, they're changing the street sales role from charity receivers to providers of diversified services, including Wi-Fi hotspots, phone charging, tourist guidance, and selling of fair trade goods. Initially, a good plan to raise 800,000 Taiwan dollars through crowdfunding. As of now, more than one million Taiwan dollars has been received. The success of this fundraising shows that such programs can be quite persuasive for their socially beneficial with an eye to solving concrete social problems. In order to foster collaboration between social entrepreneurs, we founded a national social innovation lab in Taipei last year. The lab is not only a one-stop venue of government services, but also the fruit of collective wisdom from more than 100 social enterprises. That's because we organized five co-creation workshops, and the 100 social enterprises were invited to communicate their conceptions and expectations for the lab. As such, we achieve a blended consensus and create a space fulfilling all purposes. For example, the lab stayed open until 11 p.m., and so did the cafe and the kitchen, and a resident chef was even arranged. Moreover, I personally provided an office hour at the lab every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., provided that my visitor agree to have our conversation posted online. Anyone interested in social enterprises is welcome to have a discussion with me. In fact, such arrangement was also made at the suggestion of social enterprises. We're quite pleased to see that a similar basis for social enterprise have been set up in Taoyuan City and Taichung City. We hope in this year the trend will sweep to other parts in Taiwan, especially those non-capital counties and cities that are less advantaged in resources. That was also Premier Lai Qingde's expectation for us during the lab's opening ceremony on October 18th. Of course, we always keep in mind that Taipei cannot represent the whole country. In addition to hosting the office hours at the Taipei lab every Wednesday, I take a trip every other week to Taichung, Jiayi, Kaohsiung, and Hualien City, respectively, visiting the four regional service centers to have roundtables with local social enterprises with full transcripts published online. And to free our colleagues from exhausting long travels, we use remote technologies to bring 30 colleagues from different ministries together so that we can respond to questions and demands raised by friends far and wide in real time. And gradually, this video conferencing technique is being integrated in the daily process of the administration. And so by collaborating with the civic sector, we're building a robust environment suitable for social enterprise to grow, where the power of civil society could be brought into full play. And now I would like to talk about the concept of social innovation. If we say that concept of social enterprise focuses on change of business ideas from being profit-oriented to social impact-driven, then social innovation is to change the relationship between social groups through scientific innovations and technological applications in order to devise new solutions to social issues. GovZero Air Pollution Observation Network is such an example. 
by combining the diversified talents in our communities. This project utilized a simple air quality sensor called Airbox, which is becoming very popular in Taiwan, and applies Internet of Things or IoT technologies so that all interested people can participate by providing real-time air quality information, whether on their own balconies, at school, or in the office. Little by little, bit by bit, thousands of contributors accumulated a massive database, which is closer to that of the air quality of the actual places where people are active. An exceptional advantage of Taiwan is the full support instead of rejection of the government. As part of the forward thinking infrastructure plan, we launched an IoT for Public Good program with a four year budget of almost 5 billion Taiwan dollars. And in this program, an enormous amount of environmental data on air products, on meteorology, water resources, earthquake, disaster relief, etc., are integrated into a high-speed computing environment so that we can collaboratively discover the correlations between social activities and environmental phenomena more quickly. And we're also working with our Industrial Technology Research Institute, ITRI, to assist with the manufacture of domestic, affordable, high-quality PM2.5 detectors so communities can yield data of a higher accuracy. And why does the Taiwan government encourage such social innovations? Currently, there are many misunderstandings between government and their people due to lack of transparency and insufficient information. Using the air quality as an example, establishing effective dialogues about public policies is difficult until the sources of daily air pollution are disclosed to the whole society, including where the pollution comes from, whether it's outside Taiwan, from fixed sources, and from mobile sources, etc. So we're proud that the airbox-related products and services have been introduced to all over the world. So to speak, by uniting the strengths of both the government and the public, Taiwan proved to be capable of not only solving our own problems, but also providing such solutions to other countries in similar situations as a reference. As a matter of fact, whether in the development of social enterprises or in the breakthroughs of social innovations, Taiwan yields to nobody in Asia or even the world. Indeed, we have a lot of experience and advantages that could be shared with and lent to others. Therefore, we have closely assisted civil society organizations, including Social Enterprise Insights and the Children Are Us Foundation, to hold the coming Asia-Pacific Social Enterprise Summit 2018 on May 5th to 6th this year. We call it Tomorrow Asia, and you're invited. We would like to express special thanks to Mayor Lin Jialong of Taichung City for his strong support. In Taichung Cultural and Creative Industries Park, we will carry out seminars, fairs, and small trips, fully showcasing to foreign guests and our people the vibrant social enterprises as well as advanced social innovations of Taiwan. In conclusion, the mutual trust and collaborative efforts between administrative authorities and the civil society is the foundation for the thriving of social enterprises and innovations in Taiwan. Such partnerships not only embodies the values of Taiwan, but is also favorable for us to implement what was made clear by President Tsai Ing-wen in her National Day speech last year. We're committed to link more tightly Taiwan's development with the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you for listening.